Heat waves are really bad. You know, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna make a mistake. I've learned that lesson before. You crack a shot off at three, 400 yards on a buck and get up to them and go, oh, uh-oh. golden eagle above him, just above a golden eagle on the bank. I'm Guy Eastman. We're going to head to southern Colorado for our annual antelope hunt. This year, the hunters are going to be myself and our digital subscription hunt winner, Brent Murphy from Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, we drew Brent's name out of that digital subscription base for Eastman's Hunting Journal, and he's the lucky guy. This is Brent's chance to seek his teeth into a high-quality DIY antelope hunt. Let's head down to southern Colorado and see how the hunt turns out. Congratulations on winning an antelope hunt. We partnered with our sponsors and we're going to make this a little bit better than just an antelope hunt. So you can wear this on the hunt, take it home, this is all your guys' gear. Congratulations. Feel free to wear it tomorrow. Thanks man. Thank get you. Dirty. Thank you. Hopefully we get a bloody. <laughs> He's really long and heavy. He just doesn't have much for prongs. Well, the buck's got some decent length and decent mass, but no prong. I mean, that's, and that's just a lot of what antelope hunting is. You're just covering country and looking at bucks. I mean, you have to sort through to find one of those really big bucks or those one in a thousand. You have to look at literally hundreds of bucks a lot of times. And so that's what we're doing, just covering country and looking at bucks. You can see they're still rutting. So every time you find some does, you can look and, and there's always a buck with them. But uh, just keep in mind that just because there's a buck with the does doesn't mean he's the biggest buck. He's the most dominant buck, but he may not be the biggest. Sometimes some of these satellite bucks can actually be bigger score-wise, but uh, you know the big buck that's with the does is, is a step down in score, but he's more aggressive or older or bigger bodied or stronger or whatnot. So uh, keep that in mind. You want to always look at, look at all of them thoroughly before you move on. There's another group over there. Let's see what buck's with them. I think this one by the windmill I've seen before. The dang heat waves are so bad, but probably one I should, we should go over and look closer at. I think I saw him the other night when the light was pretty low and he, he's a good buck. We just spent the morning working up a good buck inventory of the area and just spotted a big buck. He's wide and has flair. Britt and I move into position to see if we can punch his tag. I saw him, I said, you need to get your That's your one. That's, <laughs> That's where I'm a little pun is. Yeah. How 
How far was the shot? 300. 300 on the first one, huh? Yeah. Congratulations, what a buck, Brent. Holy smokes, look at the prong on that thing. Yeah, that's what we were looking for. Yep, that's what we saw, isn't it, when he was looking right at us. Wow. Look at that. Big long prong, heavy bases. Yep. You know, he's probably pushing 16 inches long. They're not a uh, very big target, are they? Oh, <laughs> Great looking antelope. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. These antelope here, a lot of them are like, you know, get really good above the prong like this one. That's one of the things we noticed when we saw him, he flares out, but we could tell that, you know, he was heavy above the prong yeah. too. And that, that makes a lot of difference. It starts really stacking the score up when you get these four, three and four inch measurements up here instead yeah, of three yeah. and two. Yeah. Well, congratulations, yeah, man. Thank Thanks you. for coming out. It's a quick hunt, but it was, it. it was a lot of fun. We yeah. looked at a lot of bucks. Well, I want to thank you and Ike and everyone at Eastman's for providing this hunt. Well, thank you. Awesome. So thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. You got a fine, fine oh, buck yeah. there. Time is now running short, and it's my turn to find a big buck. That might be that low prong buck I saw this morning. Low prong. That's him, but heat waves are really bad. You know, you gotta be careful. When you get to midday, it's 12, 18 right now, and when you get to midday, these heat waves can be so bad, you don't wanna make a mistake. Uh, I've learned that lesson before. You shoot a buck, especially guys who like to shoot long range, they get out here, wanna crack a shot off at three, 400 yards on a buck and get up to them and go, oh, uh-oh, because the heat waves sometimes can make them look twice as big as they really are. Actually, the best thing to do in the middle of the day is go back to camp, have a sandwich, and come back out once the sun starts to get in the western sky a little bit and it'll, the heat waves will subside and, and you can really judge a buck. And you know, the only exception to that is if you know what the buck is. Like if you've seen him in you know, the morning or the evening light and judged him up real good and you, he's got some distinguishing features, you can tell him apart even in the heat waves, you know, then you're okay. But to just cruise around and judge bucks in the heat waves is uh, a pretty dangerous endeavor if you're looking for a really big one. So we're gonna, gonna keep going. Maybe if we come back and we want to get a better look at him, we'll have to get closer. But he's pretty content right now, so we're just going to let him be and go see if we can find that other big buck we've seen. After some lunch, I try my luck in a different part of the hunt unit. It's the final afternoon of my Colorado antelope hunt, and my luck has finally turned, as I'm able to glass up a nice Colorado pronghorn. Hot doe there. Now well, they're coming this way. I'm hoping, you know, you just watch them and they do their thing and they get closer and closer and they come in range of view. Well, we've, uh, we've really been covering the country today and yesterday. I think in the last two days, we've driven almost 300 miles on two track roads, just looking at bucks, looking at more bucks, and we've seen everything from freaky to squeaky. And finally, we got a glimpse of a buck across this valley, and he's got three or four does, and he looks really heavy. 
buck. I think he's the best buck we've seen. So, uh, you know, this is the last day to hunt. We got to go home tomorrow. So we're going to uh, go give it a shot and see if we can get in close to him. It's going to be tough because I've hunted these valleys before and they're just huge. They're about uh, half a mile across, maybe even more and a couple miles long. And so when they get in here, they kind of feel safe, but he's rutting those does real hard and he's running that doe. And you know, a lot of times when they run those does rutting, sometimes they'll actually make a big loop and, and if you're patient enough, they'll actually get closer and come within range sometimes. The water's up above us here, there's a tank up there and, and if they haven't watered yet today, hopefully they, they might be headed that way and we're gonna get up here and get set up and, and see what happens and uh, kind of stalk in and see if we can get close enough to get a shot. He's a, he's a really good buck and he is rutting hard. He must have a hot doe there. He is really bulldogging her hard. did it. <laughs> Whew. Now that was a bonsai stock, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just got to tell Lindsay, I said, you know, you watch these bucks when they're rutting real hard like this, and sometimes you just be patient, watch them, and they'll just come right around full circle right into range. And that's what they did. We only had to stock about 80 yards, and they just made a circle because those bucks have to run those does to breed them. They got, I don't know if it's how they bring them into final heat or what, but they just ran full circle, 320 yards, waited for them to come clear. We got a wind, pretty brisk wind, but it's coming from our back, which I'm surprised they didn't smell it. So I didn't have to compensate for that right on the shoulder. That was crazy. He just like hopped and fell over. The backpack gets him again. Biggest buck we've seen by far, I think. So it's hard to judge him, but he's he's all there. He's got big prongs like a triangle. There he is. Man, he's hiding right behind that yucca bush. Yeah, I have to find him. Jeez, look at that buck. Just a really nice trophy antelope. Got good mass, good diggers, good mass above the digger. His horns hooked back. Just exactly what you would expect. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show. A little antelope safari out here in Southern Colorado with some of our hunt winners. And uh, I was the last guy to hunt and was able to finally get it done right at the last minute. So it was a lot of excitement. We had a great couple days out here, great weekend. And uh, we hope you enjoyed coming along with us. Remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. 